Hello everyone, Namaskar. It's a delight to be back in front of you for yet another session on the Merit Shine channel and this is Ravi in front of you again. I hope you had a great Christmas, a good start to the Boxing Day test for India as well and uh, we are hoping that this session will also add a lot of value to you. So what are we looking to do today? We're doing a rapid fire. We're going to do things quickly, 100 questions to look at in as quick a time as possible. So questions I'm taking from a bank PO mains perspective which means we're looking at SBI PO, IBPS PO and of course we're looking at all the important news pretty much encapsulated in uh, top 100 news items from the month of October 2021. Obviously, कुछ questions ऐसे होंगे जिसमें obviously काफी कुछ information मिलेगा आपको और कुछ questions ऐसे होंगे जहाँ पे we are looking at ensuring that we find out the answer quickly. So it's going to be a rapid fire, right? So stay with me throughout the session and more importantly, keep a track of how many questions you're getting right, how many you're getting wrong, and uh, post the number of correct answers that you got in the comment section of this particular video. So what are we waiting for? This is going to be a rapid fire, quick session. So are you ready? Because even if you miss a few seconds, then you might end up missing that question altogether. So it's important that you stay with me throughout the session. So if you're ready, we'll jump right in. Right, so let's start off with the first question. So what does it say? It says breast cancer awareness month is usually observed during the month of October to create awareness about breast cancer and to highlight the importance of early detection of the treatment of breast cancer. That's the context, which are the options, which is correct in this context. That's what we need to find out. So the pink ribbon is the international symbol of breast cancer awareness. Yes, Venkaya Naidu, Vice President of India, launched the UBF helpline, which is basically a number that is there. And it's the first of the kind national dedicated breast cancer and benign breast disease helpline in India. And this was set up by the Usha Lakshmi Breast Cancer Foundation, UBF. And in 2020, more than 4.3 million, this seems a little odd, women across the globe were diagnosed with breast cancer. So this appears to be significantly larger number overall. So I think uh, when I look at the options that are correct, it should usually be options one and two, because I think this is significantly large. So let's look at the answer from that context. Yes, so this is the correct answer. So your options one and two are correct. It's not 4.3 million, but it is 2.3 million. And pink ribbon is the international symbol for breast cancer awareness. Let's move on to the next question now quickly. Right, so recently Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi has launched the second phase of what is known as the Swachh Bharat Mission or SBM U 2.0 because that is from the context of urban. And then the Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transformation 2.0 which we know popularly as Amrit 2.0 which of the following is the incorrect option for these initiatives. The outlay for uh, SBM U 2.0 is around 1.41 lakh crores. India is processing about 2 lakh tons of waste every day. This appears to be slightly incorrect. And the outlay of Amrut 2.0 is around 2.87 lakh crore rupees. And through the SBM campaign in 2014, less than 20% of the waste generated every day in the country was processed. And now the country is processing about 70% of the daily waste. So you talk about SBM U 2.0. It basically plans to make this processing of waste up to 100%. Talking about Amrit 2.0, it aims to provide 100% coverage in terms of water supply to all the households in around 4,700 urban local bodies, also known as your ULBs, right? And uh, this is by providing about uh, 2.68 crore tap connections and about 100% coverage in terms of uh, sewerage and uh, uh, septage tanks, right? In around 500 Amrit cities by providing around 2.64 crore sewer or septage connections. So that's the overall context here. So the correct answer in this case is option B, wherein we're talking about not processing 2 lakh tons of waste every day, but we're talking about 1 lakh tons. We're talking about uh, SBM or the Swachh Bharat Mission. It was launched on October 2nd, 2014. Uh, so SBM Urban under SBM has the focus on 100% wastewater treatment and reuse. That's the whole context as far as your... Uh, SBM Urban 2.0 is concerned. Now coming on to the next question, it asks as to which comic book character has been named a mascot for the Namami Gange program for sensitizing children and youths about the cleaning of Ganga and the other rivers. So again, this is one of my favorite cartoon characters from childhood days, right? And uh, this is Chacha Chaudhary. So that is the context. Now you may wonder as to which is this entity, right? So this is basically uh, Diamond Toons, which is the entity which is collaborating with the union government on the NMCG which is the national mission for clean Ganga and the idea is to develop and distribute comics, e-comics and various uh, animated videos which will feature uh, Chacha Chaudhary jinka dimag computer se chase chalta hai with an estimated cost of rupees 2.26 crores. That's the expectation overall on this front. Moving on to the next question. The Arani Group has basically signed a BOT or a Build Operate Transfer Agreement with SLPA which is the Sri Lankan government owned uh, Sri Lanka Ports Authority and John Keel's holdings from Sri Lanka and this is basically jointly develop a WCT which is the Colombo Western Container Terminal. 
and which of the options is correct is what is going to be discussed here. So this is a more than 700 million dollar agreement which has been signed for 45 years. That is not the correct one. There are 35 years over here. Yes, the Adani Group of course holds 51% controlling stake in the investments in Colombo WCT, whereas the John Keels and SLPA hold the remaining 34% and 15% stake respectively. Now the WCT proposal came after Sri Lanka decided to withdraw the prior uh, memorandum of understanding that was there earlier, which was signed according to this option in 2017 with India and Japan on the Eastern Container Terminal. So technically this year is incorrect, but let's have a look at uh, the options that are there. I think only option two is correct. Let's again cross check that anyway. So here it's option two only that is correct. So which means that uh, this is a 700 million agreement that was signed for a period of 35 years and the uh, MOU that was signed for the Eastern Container Terminal was in 2019. Those are the corrections as far as these two options are concerned. Moving on to question five quickly. Which of these is the correct option in the recent GI tag awarded to different agricultural products from different states? So it's my options they here. Alibag, White Onion, Vada Kolam Rice Maharashtra, Edeur Chilli and then uh, uh, Kutair Tour Mango, that is Kerala and then Chinnor Rice Madhya Pradesh. So technically all of these are options which have been provided the GI tag recently. Now the question is what is a GI tag? It's a geographical indicator which tells you that a particular good has the properties of a particular region, right? So that is why it's been given a geographical tag of that particular region. So this is basically given by the geographical indications of goods. Registration and Protection Act 1999. It is issued by the Geographical Indications Registry, which is based out of Chennai. So these are the uh, uh, what do you say products of different states which have basically received uh, GI tags recently. Moving on to question number six. Uh, read the following options and choose the correct one as far as Mission Basundhara is concerned, which was launched by the government of Assam to resolve the state's land record by enabling the state's people to resolve their latest land related issues easily through an online system. So that is where Mission Basundhara came into the existence. Which are the options that have to be found out as correct? State government has planned to spend around 425 crores. The amount galat hai, 225 crore hai. Then the mission will basically clear, update land records and rebuild all lost land records of the state in a mission mode by offering seven land revenue related services online. It's not seven, it's nine related uh, uh, services online. And the mission would basically conduct a polygon survey uh, of yet to be surveyed 672 non-cadastral villages. Matlab, jo kisi uh, area ke location mein abhi tak defined nahi hai, un villages ka aap, uh, survey karoge of Assam. And this is to be happening by 31st of March 2022. So the answer in this case should ideally be if I look at the correct options, it has to be option number D. So option 1 and 2 are definitely incorrect. So based on that, we have the answer as this. So it is not 425 crore, it is 225 crores and it is 9 land revenue related services online. That's the context. So moving on to the next question now. Uh, so recently, uh, Pr Prime Minister Narendra Modi virtually launched the JJM or the Jal Jeevan Mission mobile application to create awareness about the JJM and to improve transparency and accountability of the schemes under the JJM that is there. Now, which of the following again is correct in terms of the given options. So the PM also launched the Rashtriya Jal Jeevan Kosh, which is basically going to be a fund kind of a thing, which will facilitate any individual or an institution or a corporation or a philanthropist, be it in India or abroad, to contribute towards uh, providing a tap water connection in India. That's the context. Then in August 2021, as for the 15th Finance Commission, recommendations around uh, rupees 1.42 lakh crore was allocated for the PRIs or the Panchayati Raj institutions as a tied grant for water and sanitization or sanitation for the period FY 2022 to FY 2026. Now it is a mission that was basically launched on 15th of August 2019, that's what is being called, to provide safe and adequate drinking water through individual, what is known as your FHTC, which is your functional household tap connection. And this is to be done by 2024 across all households in India. So in this case, all the options are indeed correct. And uh, this was actually launched in August 2019. JJM is under implementation in partnership with the state with an outlay of 3.6 lakh crores. So now moving on to question 8 quickly. Name the recipient of the 2021 Nobel Prize for Physiology or Medicine. So in this case, the answer turns out to be David Julius and Ardem Patapushian. So basically, what was it that they won the award for? This was for their discoveries of receptors for temperature and touch. That's the reason why they won the award. So David Julius and Ardem Patapushian. Now moving on to question number nine. Recipients of the Nobel Prize in Physics. Sikoro Manabe and uh, Klaus Hasselmann are of Germany and Giorgio Parisi of Italy won the Nobel Prize in Physics, right? And this is obviously at the Royal uh, Swedish Academy of Sciences at Stockholm, Sweden. Now, three scientists were primarily awarded for their groundbreaking contributions to our understanding of complex physical systems. So that's the reason why they won the award for Nobel Prize in Physics. Moving on to question number 10. 
The Defense Accounts Department DAD under the aegis of the Ministry of Defense has developed an IT or information system enabled payment and accounting system which is basically known as Prabal and that is the answer to this one. Moving on to the next one quickly. Read the following and choose the correct option in terms of the National Voluntary Blood Donation Day 2021. So this is basically annually observed across India on October 1st not October 2nd to create awareness about blood donation and promote voluntary blood donation across India. Now the theme of the national voluntary blood donation is basically give blood and keep the world beating. Very interesting and noble thought as a theme. Now, the first ever national voluntary blood donation day was observed on 1st of October 1975 by ISBTI which is basically your Indian Society for Blood Transfusion and Immunohematology. So let's look at the options in this case. Option 2 and 3 are definitely correct. The one which is wrong is option 1 because the date is 1st of October and not 2nd October. Now talking about the World Blood Donor Day that is basically annually observed on 14th of June. Now the theme for 2021 was basically give blood and keep the world beating. So that's the context on this one. Moving on to question number 12 quickly which is the theme for the World's Teachers Day 2021 observed on October 5th. Interestingly we observe National Teachers Day in India on September 5th but the World Teachers Day is observed on October 5th. Now, if you look at the options here and if I basically wanted to talk about relating with what's happening latest, I would have guessed that this should be the possible answer. Teachers at the heart of education, recovery, recovery from the pandemic. That's the context and that indeed is our answer to this one. Moving on to the next question in terms of who won the Nobel Prize in 2021 in chemistry. German chemist Benjamin List and your British chemist David W.C. Macmillan for the development of precise new and ingenious tools for molecular construction and specifically talking about asymmetric organocatalysis that's the reason why they've been given the nobel prize in chemistry for now moving on to the next question 14 nobel prize in literature the award basically goes to abdul razak gurna so the royal swedish academy of sciences awarded the 2021 nobel prize in literature to abdul razak Gurna, a Tanzanian novelist based in the United Kingdom and uh, it's ironical that uh, he's based in the United Kingdom and he basically talks about the effects of colonialism and the fate of refugee in the gulf between cultures and continents. Moving on to the next question. Which company has delivered the heaviest uh, semi-cryogenic propellant tank named SC-120 LOX to ISRO? So that answer is basically Hindustan Aeronautics Limited and the context is it's basically a semi-cryoliquid oxygen that's what it's known as LOX which will be part of the SC-120 stage of ISRO's GSLV Mark III, which is basically in terms of the launch vehicles. And this is going to be replacing the existing L110 stage. So that's the context. So Hindustan Aeronautics Limited is the answer to this one. Moving on to the next one. Tata Sense uh, basically had its subsidiary, which is uh, Tele's Private Limited, which has won the final bid for acquiring a national carrier, which is the Air India, by submitting a bid worth 18,000 crores. Right. So we've got to look at the options now. So the ministerial panel led by Union Home Minister Amit Shah approved the bid. Okay. Then the airline Air India was established by industrialist and philanthropist J.R.D. Tata, absolutely. And he was definitely India's first licensed pilot and a highly respected uh, industrialist as well. And this basically happened in 1932 when uh, uh, the airline was established, but it was sold to the government not in 1958, but it was sold in 1953. And the airline basically started to lose money after its merger with the state-owned domestic operator Indian Airlines and this merger happened in 2007. So you're basically looking at options 2 and 3 which are incorrect. So if I go over the options that is given here, uh, we know that options 2 and 3 are incorrect. So this option has to be the correct answer, right? So this is basically 1953 and then merger happened in 2007. Now moving on to the next question, number 17. Which states basically celebrate the Batukamma festival? So when I say Amma, it sounds more in the context of a South Indian state. And uh, I'm tempted to guess it's basically going to be both the Telangana and Andhra Pradesh because they're close proximity in terms of uh, position, uh, in terms of the regions. And that's where this basically looks to be the most ideal answer. And indeed, we are correct in that sense. What is Batukamma? It's basically part of the Dasera festivities. And it's a traditional Hindu festival, uh, obviously celebrated across uh, in the state of Telangana and in some parts of Andhra Pradesh as well. Now, it basically talks about Batukoma, which is the goddess of life, which is the relationship between the earth, the water and the humans. Now, moving on to question number 18, Nobel Peace Prize in 2021, that basically goes to Maria Rissa and Dmitry Andreevich Muratov. What did they do? They're basically both journalists. So Maria Rissa is a journalist from Philippines and Muratov is a journalist from Russia. And this is for their efforts to protect the freedom of expression and the precondition of democracy across uh, locations and also lasting peace. Now, Maria Rissa happens to be the 18th woman to win the Nobel Peace Prize, right? 
So again, a great achievement from her perspective. Moving on to question number 19, talking about the multidimensional poverty index MPI 2021 released by uh, UNDP, which is the United Nations Development Program and the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative, OPHI. So basically talking about this, India has the maximum number of people, which is 381 million living in multidimensional poverty, one in six multidimensionally poor, which is 207 million across 108 countries. Uh, live in female headed households in India. Four out of six multidimensional poor are from lower tribes or castes. So this is, I think, the incorrect one. So here it has to be five out of six. The report basically examined the level and composition of multidimensional poverty across 109 countries, which basically covered 9 billion people and presents an ethnicity, race, caste disaggregation for 41 countries overall. Now, it basically states that the disparities in multidimensional poverty amongst ethnic groups are consistently high across many countries. And in nine ethnic groups, more than 90% of the populations are basically living in poverty. That's a significant number. So all these look to be correct. The only option which I think is incorrect is from the context of the option number C, wherein five out of six multidimensionally poor from an Indian context are from the lower tribes or caste. So that is the context on this question. Moving on to question number 20. Which product from the state of Tamil Nadu has received the GI or the geographical indication tag, right? So basically, uh, Karupur Kalamkari paintings, uh, Kallakuruchi wooden carvings and Kanyakumari clove, all these three belong to the region of Tamil Nadu only. So from that context, all three are correct, right? So some of the other inclusions, we obviously talked about it in one of the other questions as well. So it is basically Kutayatur mango and uh, Edeur chilli from uh, Kerala. Then you have your Laholi knitted socks and gloves and uh, Chamba chappal from Himachal Pradesh and uh, Telia Rumal of Telangana and Sujat Mehendi of Rajasthan. Manjush Art of Bihar are some of the others which have basically received the GI tax this year. Moving on to the next question, eat the following and choose the correct option in terms of the World Mental Health Day is basically observed on 10th of October. The theme for the World Mental Health Day in 2021 as per WFMH, which is basically your World Federation for Mental Health is basically the theme is mental health in an unequal world. Right, and the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare launched the Mental Health Awareness Week, which started on 5th of October and culminated on 10th of October 2021, which is the World Mental Health Day. Now, in this case, I feel all the options are correct. Mental health has obviously taken a lot of precedence in the last couple of years, especially in the context of the pandemic and a lot of people getting depressed. So definitely a very important angle from that standpoint. So this is the correct option. Definitely all three are correct. Right. So Mental Health Week basically uh, 5th to 10th of October. Now, Mansuk Mandavia, the Union Minister of Health and Family Welfare, basically launched what is known as your Green Ribbon, right? So this is basically an initiative to create awareness about mental health in the country as part of various initiatives that took place in the Mental Health Awareness Week 2021, right? So that's the context on question 21. Moving on to 22 now. So basically the question is who's appointed as the CEO of the Energy Efficiency Services Limited? So the answer in this case is Sri Arun Kumar Mishra. So it's basically a joint venture of NTPC, then uh, Rural Electrification Corporation, Power Finance Corporation and Power Grid Corporation of India. All of them came together and basically set up EESL and Arun Kumar Mishra is going to be the CEO on deputation. Moving on to question 23, uh, which civil aviation company blacked by Rajesh Jujudwana has received a no objection certificate from the Ministry of Civil Aviation to operate commercial flights across India from summer of 2022? The answer, of course, all of you are aware, it's Akasa Air. Basically, Akasa Air is not just being backed by Rakesh Jujudwana, but also the uh, former CEO of uh, Jet Airways, which is Vinay Dubey. So all of both of them have basically backed uh, this as well. Moving on to next question, which is basically the 22nd Lal Bahadur Shastri National Award for Excellence, and that has been given to Dr. Randeep Guleria. Now, uh, basically, this was given by Vice President uh, M. Venkaya Naidu, presented to uh, uh, the director of AIMS, which is Dr. Randeep Guleria, for his, again, pioneering work even prior to COVID and also during the COVID times as well. Moving on to question number 25, recipients of the Nobel Peace Prize in Economic Sciences for 2021. So the Royal Swedish Academy for Sciences awarded the Nobel Prize in Economic Science, which also was formerly known as your uh, Swerige's Risk Bank Prize in Economic Sciences in memory of Alfred Nobel 2021. And this has been given to David card for his empirical contributions to labor economics and we're talking about Joshua Angrist 
and Guido Imbens for their methodological contributions to the analysis of causal relationships. So it's Card, Angrist and Imbens who have been given the Nobel Prize in Economics. Moving on to the next one. What is the theme for the International Day of the Girl Child 2021 observed on 11th of October? So the answer in this case is a digital generation, our generation. Again, think in the context of what could be a possible theme. And if I try to guess it, this would possibly be the correct answer and it indeed is. Now talking about the National Girl Child Day, that was basically on 24th of January every year. That's from the Indian context, right? So moving on to the next question, we're talking about uh, the correct option for the recently launched Indian Space Association, ISPA, which is a private industry body to help boost space technology in India, virtually launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. So the ISPA will basically participate and work with ISRO and other stakeholders of both government as well as its agencies on the issue of policy around space domain and technology. Now, some of the founding members that are there is basically LNT, Nelco, which is part of the Tata Group, OneWeb, Bharti Airtel, Map My India, Walchandnagar Industries and Anant Technology Limited are some of the core founding members that are there. Four pillars of space technology, the Prime Minister basically represented freedom of innovation to the private sector, uh, the government's role as an enabler, preparing the youth for the future and seeing the space sector as a resource for the progress of the common man as the four primary pillars of space technology. So all of these options appear to be correct in this case. Nothing seems to be wrong and that indeed is the answer. Moving on to question number 28 now. So basically, which of the following is incorrect with respect to the recent visit of Prime Minister of Denmark, Mette Frederiksen to India. So the two nations PMs have reconfirmed their commitment to what is known as the Green Strategic Partnership and they've firmed up a five-year action plan which starts from 2021 to 2026. And the idea is to basically focus on ways to augment and consolidate green and low carbon growth. That's the whole idea. Now, six government-to-government -government agreements were signed is what is being talked about. Now, we'll check whether it was six or more or less. Yes. Then it is Mette Frederiksen's uh, first state visit to India. Absolutely. Both the governments have also made uh, three commercial uh, memorandums of understanding. Yes. The two prime ministers agreed to enhance the commercial cooperation with the uh, new technologies and in particular talking about green hydrogen, e-mobility and storage. So all of these appear to be correct. This is the one wherein I have some doubt. So the answer in this case happens to be four government to government agreements that were signed in the field of traditional knowledge skill development and mapping of groundwater resources, right? So Denmark capital is Copenhagen and the currency is Danish Krone. This is just from a static standpoint. Now moving on to question number 29, which bank has basically picked up more than 12% stake or at least 12% stake in the proposed bad bank that all of us are aware of, NARCL as it is called. So State Bank of India, Union Bank of India, Indian Bank, all three have a stake of 13.27% and Punjab National Bank has picked up a 12% stake. So the answer in this case is all of the above because all of them have a stake of 12% or more. Moving on to the next question. Uh, the question is basically with regards to the second phase of the 25th edition of the joint naval exercise titled Malabar. Uh, started in the Bay of Bengal region, right? So what are the options that are fitting in the context here? So first phase of 2021 Malabar exercise was hosted by the US Navy in August near the Guam Islands in the Pacific Ocean, okay? In the second phase, the Indian side is basically represented by INS Ranvijay, INS uh, Satpura, and P-8I long range maritime patrol aircraft and a submarine. Now Malabar exercise was basically started in 1995. I'm not so sure about this as a bilateral naval exercise between India and the USA. So I feel that in this case, options uh, one and two are correct. Option three basically talks about the Malabar exercise, which I believe was in 1992, exactly, which was started as a bilateral naval exercise between the India and the US, right? Moving on to the next question now. Basically, uh, we're talking about which of the following is the incorrect option for the 58th edition of EY Global Limited's uh, Renewable Energy Country Attractiveness Index, also known as Rekai. So China has topped the index, definitely not. Rekai is a biannual report, yes, uh, being released since 2003. Absolutely, EY ranks the world's top 40 countries based on their attractiveness of their renewable energy investments and deployment opportunities. Absolutely, India has ranked third in the index. Yes, definitely, this is also correct. Now, there's also something called as the PPA index or the Corporate Power Purchase Agreement. Uh, this was also newly added in the current edition of Rekai, which is your uh, Renewable Energy Country Awareness Index. Uh, and in this particular element, which is the PPA index, India is basically ranked sixth among the top 30 PPA markets, which also happens to be correct. So definitely China has not topped the index, which is the one which has topped the index. So the index was topped by US, China was second, India was third. Talking about the PPA index, India, where it is in sixth, Spain has stopped that PPA index, US is second and France is third. Moving on to question number 32, who has won the prestigious CK Prahalad award for global business sustainability leadership for the year 2021? That is Satya Nadella of Microsoft. 
right now talking about the others who are in the list sundar pichai you are already aware of shantanu rayan is the chairman president and ceo of adobe inc since december 2007 talking about ajay pal singh banga who is the executive chairman of mastercard and obviously was uh, serving as the president and ceo of the company from july 2010 till december 31st 2020 now he said to retire from this position of executive chairman as well uh, by the end of 2021 that's the expectation on this front so that is some of the uh, leaders on the global front who have done uh, india proud moving on to question 33 Which of the following is incorrect regarding PM Gati Shakti, which is a national master plan for multimodal connectivity, which has been launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi during an event at Pragati Maidan, New Delhi. So, Gati Shakti is basically a digital platform collaborating 12 central ministries. I'm not so sure if it is 12 or I think it's slightly more than that. and departments for basically integrated planning and coordination to implement infrastructure connectivity projects for more than 1200 industrial clusters. Now, it is a campaign to lend more speed, obviously, Gati. and also lend more power which is shakti that is what it's called it's gati shakti right two projects by connecting all concerned departments on one platform now it is also an important part of uh, atmanirbhar bharat which is the self dependent india that we have basically brought up it will also complement the projects under the 1.5 trillion dollar national infrastructure pipeline and will also boost the goal of achieving a dollar 5 trillion economy from an indian context now gati shakti program has basically six pillars and uh, it will lay the foundation for economic growth over the next 25 years so all these are part of the uh, plan itself now given these options the option where i feel the maximum disconnect is with option a let's try and see if that's correct or not so yes it is so it's not 12 central ministries but coordinating with and collaborating with 16 central ministries and departments that's the context here everything else was correct in this one moving on to the next question number 34 so talking about which state has launched the chief minister's health for all or g hakchel g tengbal right so uh, technically in this odisha should not be the option in this case has to be the other three and i am inclined towards manipur let's try and have a look yes it is manipur so the chief minister of manipur uh nongthombam beren singh basically launched the chief minister's health for all also known as ji hak chel ji tengbal scheme so it will basically be providing door to door health services and health screening services and free of cost uh, jan aushadhi medicines uh, at the phcs or the primary health care centers right so moving on to the next question now question number 35 what is the theme of the global hand washing day observed on 15th of october so here the context is again when i look at from a future perspective it should ideally be our future is at hand let's move forward together and yes that's a more logical way of looking at it and that's the correct answer in this case so world health organization and the united nations children fund UNICEF basically launched the report titled State of the World's Health Hygiene uh, a global call to action to make hand hygiene a priority in policy as well as in practice especially in the context of the covid pandemic becomes extremely relevant and that's the answer in this case moving on to question 36 what is the theme for the international day of rural women 2021 that was observed on 15th of october so in this case it's a slightly tricky one but the answer here is rural women cultivating good food for all that's the correct answer right so in september 2021 the united nations women launched a report titled beyond covid 19 a feminist plan for sustainability and social justice and this basically gives a practical road map for gender responsive recovery from the effects of covid 19 that's the whole context here right moving on to the next question now Uh, which of the following is an incorrect option with respect to the global hunger index 2021 so india is ranked 101 out of 116 countries with a score of 27.5 the ghi has been jointly published by unicef and the food agricultural organization i'm not so sure about this now the ghi score of the world fell 4.7 point which means uh, overall the world has gone down on this from 25.1 to 20.4 between 2006 and 2012 it has just fallen 2.5 points since 2012 as per the data that has been provided by ghi from uh, 2016 till 2020 hunger is considered extremely alarming in one country which is somalia and it is considered alarming in nine countries and serious in around 37 countries right that's still a significant number the ranking in the gsi is based on four primary indicators which is undernourishment you talk about child wasting then you talk about child stunting and then child mortality so all these seem to be correct so the answer which uh, to, has to be there is it's not option b because uh, gsi is basically uh, from a 2021 context was published by the irish aid agency which is your concern worldwide and the german organization titled uh, wealth hunger health so that is the two uh, entities which published the ghi for 2021 right moving on to question number 38 global tb report for 2021 by the who so the report mentioned that india uh, as the worst hit country in tb elimination where the detection of new tb cases saw a huge impact in 2020 so uh, a dramatic reduction of 20% tb cases were witnessed in 2020 as compared to 2019 so a gap of around 4.1 million cases actually uh, came in so there was a dramatic reduction there the progress of tb detection has gone back to the 
2012 levels would basically India accounting for uh, 21% of the total case drops in 2020, right? So if I look at this number, I think if you're talking about it from a uh, overall perspective, this number seems to be a little less. So the answer here is of course option one and two being correct. The problem with option three is that India basically accounts for around 41% of the total case drops that are there in 2020. So that's the correction that is required. Rest of the report is fine. Moving on to question 39. Which of the following is the correct option for World Students Day? So from that context, it is observed on 15th of October to mark the birth anniversary of the 11th President of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. So World Students Day uh, basically for the year 2021 had the theme learning for people, planet, prosperity and peace that also is correct. A total of 22 teachers from various states have been selected for Dr. Kalam Memorial Teachers Award. This is by Dr. VK Patel Foundation and Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Center as a mark of their contribution towards promoting education in times of the COVID-19 pandemic as well. So 22 teachers have indeed been selected. So in this case, all the options seem to be correct and that indeed is the correct answer. So everything in this is definitely correct. Moving on to the next question. Uh, which of the following is an incorrect option with respect to the 14th edition of the Indian Premier League? If I like try to read this, CSK under the captaincy of Amendra Singh Dhoni won the fourth IPL title. Yes, orange cap Rituraj Gaikwad, 635 runs in 16 matches in the 14th IPL to win the orange cap. Absolutely. And he was the highest run scorer of the tournament. Then Harshal Patel was the purple cap winner for Royal Challengers Bangalore. All of that uh, in terms of most number of wickets in the current season. Virat Kohli became the first player to score 1000 runs against one franchise. No, that's incorrect. Mahindra Singh became the first player in the world to captain 300 T20 games. This is also correct. So the correct answer is option D because it's not Virat Kohli. It was Rohit Sharma and he did that against Kolkata Knight Riders. So that's the context here. Moving on to question number 41. Who has been appointed as chairman of the World Steel Association for the period 2021-22? That is Sajjan Jindal and he happens to be the chairman and the managing director of JSW Steel Limited. Right, and uh, Jindal will be the first representative from India to basically serve as the chairman of the World Steel Association and is basically headquartered in Brussels, Belgium. Moving on to question number 42. The theme for the World Food Day uh, is basically our actions are our future. Better production, better nutrition and a better environment and a better life. All of them seems to get better. Right, so the day commemorates the form, uh, founding of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations on 16th of October 1948. Okay, so the World Food Day 2021 is the first international day to be celebrated at the Expo 2020 uh, in Dubai on 16th of October 2021 as a part of a series of activities. I have only one problem, which is that uh, I think FAO was founded pretty much closer to the end of World War II. So from that context, the answer should ideally be 1945-46. So let's try and look at that. So here the answer is indeed that only. So only option two is incorrect. Why? Because the day commemorates the foundation of the Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations on 16th of October 1945. Right. Moving on to the next question. 43. Actually, uh, so options are correct in terms of the uh, International Day for Eradication of Poverty. So United Nations General Assembly UNGA basically adopted the resolution on 22nd December 1992 and proclaimed October 17th of every year as the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. So the theme for 2021 is uh, building forward together, ending persistent poverty, respecting all people and the planet. In 2021, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the number of people living in poverty is expected to have increased between 143 to 163 million. And the pandemic ha has actually increased the poverty by 8.1% in 2020 as compared to 2019. So if I look at the options, all of them seem logical and correct to me. And indeed, the answer in this case is options 1, 2 and 3, all of them are correct. Now, talking about this, in December 2017, uh, UNGA basically proclaimed the third United Nations decade for the eradication of poverty, which was basically from uh, 2018 till 2027. Right, moving on to the next question, 44. Recently, the central government has kept the interest rates on your small savings schemes unchanged for the third quarter of the financial year 2022. That is from 1st October 2021 till December 31st, 2021. That's the third quarter, right? Which state is the largest contributor in terms of the small savings scheme? So the answer in this case is West Bengal. That's the largest contributor. And then the second is Uttar Pradesh in that context. This is as per the data provided by the National Savings Institute. Right, so moving on to the next question, we're talking about uh, NASA's space mission, basically termed as Lucy. So the spacecraft Lucy was launched on SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Now SpaceX is uh, Elon Musk's company. I'm not so sure if that was the launch rocket used for this. Uh, and talks about the Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space uh, Force Station in Florida, United States. This appears to be correct. So mission will be powered by solar energy. It will run for 12 years and will visit eight asteroids, seven Trojans, which are basically located in two separate swarms. 
ahead of and behind Jupiter in its orbit and one in the main belt, right? And is expected to cover a distance of about 6.3 billion kilometers, right? And the second mission of NASA to the Trojan asteroids of Jupiter. In this case, I have a little confusion with these two options because uh, I'm not so sure if NASA tied up with SpaceX. So I think that's not the answer in this case. And it's definitely not the second mission. It is the first mission. So let's try and see uh, what is the correct answer. Yes, option two is the only option that is correct. Why is the first one wrong? Because the spacecraft Lucy was basically launched on ULA or the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket from the same space launch uh, complex 41 at Cape Canaveral. Now, the second thing is NASA's first expedition into the Trojan asteroids of Jupiter to study the evolution of the solar system and the formation of the giant planets. That's the context. So this was not the second expedition, but this is the first expedition towards the Trojan asteroids of Jupiter. Moving on to the next question, 46. So the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has set up an expert group to develop a comprehensive tax policy on all tobacco products, be it uh, smoking or smokeless. Which of the following is an incorrect option is what we need to find out. So the panel will be headed by Vikas Shield, Additional Secretary in uh, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Yes, the panel consists of six members. I think it's not correct. Analyzing the current tax structure in all forms of tobacco, including smokeless tobacco and suggesting various rate models for the preparation of uh, FY23 and future union budgets. So again, that's part of the... Uh, policy that they're going to come up with. Currently, tobacco uh, products are in the 28% GST bucket, yes, and uh, tobacco leaves are taxed at 5%. And the WHO basically uh, recommended a tax burden of at least 75% of the retail price for basically all the tobacco products. That's what WHO is saying. Now, in this context, I think uh, the only option which I feel is incorrect is option B, because it's not a six member panel, it's a nine member panel that we're basically talking about who are some of the prominent members. Obviously, Vikash Shiel is part of it. Dr. Pulkesh Kumar, who's the Deputy Secretary of uh, the Ministry of uh, Health and Family Welfare. And of course, Dr. Riju M. John, who's an health economist. So all these are prominent members in the panel. So next, moving on to question number 47, we're talking about uh, choose the correct option for the 10th edition of the Global Food Security Index uh, GFSI 2021 released by the Economist Impact, right? So India has basically been ranked 71st out of 113 countries in the index. Uh, it is premised upon 58 indicators with, with basically four overarching categories, which is affordability, availability, then we're talking about quality and safety, and then the natural resources and resilience. And the next thing which is being talked about is that the index has been topped by Austria. So I think that is probably one thing which I'm not uh, sure about. So I think option two and one are definitely correct. Uh, three is different because the answer is that it's not topped by Austria, it is topped by Ireland with an overall score of 84 and then Ireland is followed by Austria and the United Kingdom. Now, among the four categories, India was basically ranked 80th in terms of affordability, 29th in terms of availability, 74th in terms of quality and safety and 40th in terms of natural resources and resilience. So that's the context from an India standpoint. Right, so moving on to the next question now, we're looking at question number 48, wherein we're talking about choosing the correct option for the 13th edition of the Mercer Global Pension Index MCGPI, which is basically brought in by Mercer and the CFA Institute as a tie-up. Now the index has been taught by Denmark, no, the index uh, where India has been ranked 39th, I think it's doing worse than this. And then uh, if you look at this, four new retirement systems were added to uh, this year, basically Iceland, uh, Taiwan, UAE and Uruguay, I think this is correct. So if I look at it, option one and two are incorrect. So it is not topped by Denmark, if I understand correctly. Iceland made it into an entry this year and it ended up topping also, right? Netherlands was second and Denmark was third and each basically received the A grade. Now India has been performing pathetically on that front. It has been ranked 40th out of 43. Earlier it used to be 34 out of 39, right? And now it's basically gone one position worse, right? In terms of the systems on the overall index ranking. If you look at the lowest country, that is basically Thailand. That's the context. Moving on to question number 49, right? So basically you're talking about the World Justice Project, right? So WJP in terms of the rule of law index 2021. So India has again been ranked 79th out of 139 countries and jurisdictions in the index. Now talking about the WJP rule of law index 2021, it basically ranks countries on a score from 0 to 1 with 1 indicating the strongest adherence to the rule of law, right? And Denmark has stopped the index. Now let's try and understand the context in this case. I think all the options are correct here. India is indeed ranked 79th. Denmark has stopped the index and uh, this is the way the index is actually calculated. Now under the rule of law survey, 74.2%, which basically accounts for almost 84.7% of the world's total population. So the 74.2% surveyed countries basically... Uh, experience decline in terms of the rule of law performance, which means adherence to law, right? While only 
25.8 percent of the surveyed countries actually improved in terms of the rule of law performance right so that's the uh, wjp report for 2021 moving on to the question number 50 right so this is basically talking about the new scheme uh, shri dhanvantri generic medical store scheme so this scheme was launched by the government of Chhattisgarh to provide low cost generic medicines and enable seamless uh, healthcare services to the vulnerable people of the state. Then under the scheme around 188 medical shops are planned to be opened in 169 cities and the scheme mandates the medical stores to sell 251 types of your generic medicines and 27 surgical products along with Sanjeevni products of the forest department. So I think again all of the options in this case are correct because they are talking about exactly what the state has been doing in terms of Shri Dhanvantri medical store scheme. So moving on to question number 51 now which is the state which has launched the Mukhya Mantri Ration Aapke Dwar Yojana. So when I talk about Mukhya Mantri, I am more inclined towards either uh, UP or Madhya Pradesh and the answer in this case happens to be Madhya Pradesh. So the government of MP has announced the implementation of the Mukhya Mantri Ration Aapke Dwar Yojana which will basically commence from November 2021. Under the scheme, the ration will be provided at the doorstep of the villagers where there are no fair price shops or FPS as they are called. Right. So that is the answer in this case Madhya Pradesh. Moving on to question number 52. Which of the following is the incorrect option with respect to uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Kushinagar in UP? So it was basically to inaugurate the Kushinagar International Airport. Yes, Kushinagar International Airport will not be the fourth, it will be the third international and the ninth operational airport to become functional in UP. So I think this option is incorrect. He participated in an event uh, marking Abhidhamma Day that is at the Mahapari Nirvana Temple in Kushinagar. That is also correct. Now the inauguration was basically marked by the landing of the inaugural flight at the airport from Colombo, Sri Lanka carrying a Sri Lankan delegation of over 100 Buddhist monks and dignitaries which basically included the 12 member holy relic and tourist bringing the holy buddha relics for the exposition now during the public function at uh, barwa jungle kushinagar the prime minister also inaugurated and laid the foundation stone of 12 development projects which were worth over 180 crore now since only one of these options is incorrect i know for a fact that option b is the incorrect option because you're looking at a third and ninth operational airport to be functional in up Right, and this is uh, everything else from this perspective in, the, in terms of the visit to Kushinagar is definitely correct. Moving on to question number 53, we're talking about uh, which of the countries that have been added to the grey list of the global terror financing watchdog that is FATF which is your financial action task force. So grey list obviously refers to uh, countries where you need to be careful about whenever you're doing any kind of financial transactions with those countries. So from that perspective, Jordan, Mali, Turkey, all three have actually been added to the grey list of FATF. Right. Now talking about FATF, the current president is Dr. Marcus Player, he's part of Germany and then the presidency is with Germany for the time being from 2020 to 2022 and it is headquartered in, FATF is headquartered in Paris, France. So that's the context as far as question number 53 is concerned. Now question number 54, who's the author of the book title, Actually I Met Them a Memoir. So that is basically Sampurn Singh Kalra and that is nothing but the famous poet and uh, lyricist Gulzar. So that is the answer in this case. Right. So moving on to the next question, 55. Uh, which state has launched the web portal named eMunnetram? So the answer is fairly straightforward, especially if you are someone who uh, understands the regional dialects of these places. The answer in this case has to be Tamil Nadu. So talking about the development on this front, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, uh, Muthuvel Karunanidhi Stalin, that is MK Stalin, has basically launched a web portal named eMunnetram to review the progress of all important infrastructure projects that have happened in the state. And the portal was developed by the Tamil Nadu e-governance agency, which is uh, Tiniga. Uh, as part of the information technology department and currently the portal is actually working as a private portal that's the context on this one on e-munnetram so moving on to the next question we're talking about the world association of investment promotion agencies uh, that's the primary nodal agency for the investment promotion agencies uh, ipa which is representing 105 countries invest india a young startup with the government of india has been unanimously elected as the president of vipa for the period 2021 to 2023 that's again a good development now talking about the vipa council members are united nations uh, organizations which basically includes your UNCTAD, which is the united nations conference for trade and development wto ilo which is international labor organization unido which is your united nations industrial development organization the world bank the international chamber of commerce and the oecd and obviously the international economic development councils all these are your uh, council members overall so all these options appear to be correct to me there is nothing incorrect here so all of them are definitely uh, correct Right. The only thing which I want to highlight is that the committee president is Invest India. There are two vice presidents. Uh, they've been chosen from Egypt and Switzerland and there are nine regional directors which is basically Brazil, South Korea, Finland, Kuwait, Costa Rica, Cyprus, Azerbaijan, Ghana and Samoa. So that's the answer in this context for question number 56. Moving on to 57. 
United Nations Day is observed on 24th of October and it was basically uh, came into existence in 1945 uh, and the charter was basically ratified by China, France, the Soviet Union at that point of time, the United Kingdom and of course United States and most of the signatories and the name United Nations was basically coined by the United States President at that point of time which is Franklin D. Roosevelt. So that is October 24th, right? That's the context. Moving on to 58. What was the theme for the World Polio Day 2021, which is observed on October 24th? So again, the context here is uh, again talking about delivering on our promise for a polio free world sounds to be more logical as the correct answer. And that indeed is our theme. One day, one focus ending polio, right? Now, why is it celebrated? Because uh, it marks the birth anniversary of uh, Jonas Sark, who is the American virologist who developed the first successful polio vaccines, right? Now, for more than three years, the wild polio cases are reported in only two countries, which is Pakistan and Afghanistan at this point in time. Right, so moving on to question number 59. So it says that recently the government has set up the National Steering Committee for the implementation of the National Initiative for Proficiency in Reading with Understanding and Numeracy. Again, a brilliant acronym called Nipun. Right, and this is the Nippon Bharat Mission. Who is the chairman of this committee? This will basically be Dharmendra Pradhan, who happens to be the Minister of Education and the Minister of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship. Now, the Department of Social Education and Literacy had launched Nippon Bharat Mission on 5th of July 2021. So, the goal is basically to achieve universal proficiency in foundational literacy and numeracy by grade 3 for children and this has to be done by the year 2026-2027 which has been envisaged in the NEP or the National Education Policy itself, right? Moving on to question number 60. Which state government has launched the Go Green scheme and its portal to provide electric two-wheelers at subsidized rates to construction and industrial workers of the state? So if I go by uh, pure common sense, it looks like uh, Gujarat as the most possible answer and that indeed is the correct answer. So the organized workers uh, in terms of the sector such as the industrial laborer would basically get a subsidy of 30% on the vehicle's price or 30,000 whichever is lower on the purchase of battery powered two wheelers. So again a noble initiative in order to promote uh, renewable sources of energy. Moving on to question 61, uh, we're talking about uh, a recent project launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He launched a pan India scheme named Prime Minister Ayushman Bharat Health Infrastructure Mission from Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh. He inaugurates various uh, developmental projects around 5,200 crores for Varanasi. And in a separate event, he also inaugurated five medical colleges in Uttar Pradesh worth uh, uh, 2329 crores to make UP a medical hub of India. So the only problem that I have is number of medical colleges started in UP was probably higher in that context. So the answer in this case is option D because only one and two are correct. Three is incorrect because there are not five medical but nine medical colleges in Uttar Pradesh that have been uh, uh, launched in order to make UP as a medical hub for India. Right, moving on to question number 62. So the National Skill Development Corporation in collaboration with the global partners launched India's first and largest impact bond for skilling in India. Right. So which are the correct statements are there? So we've got to look at that. So the collaboration basically involves dollar $14.4 million funds which will benefit 50,000 youth by making them employment ready. This seems to be correct. The target group basically includes 50% women and girls. Sounds very convenient as 50%. I think it's slightly more than that. Now India has the least female labor force participation in Southeast Asia which is at 20.3%. This also seems to be correct. Uh, along with NSDC, the global coalition comprises of uh, HRH Prince Charles British Asian Trust, then the Michael and uh, Susan Dell Foundation, that is MSDF, and the Children's Investment Fund uh, Foundation, and then HSBC India, JSW Foundation, Dubai Cares, with the FCDO and USAID as the technical partners. So all of these uh, tend to be the agencies that are associated with NSDC in that context. So this also appears to be correct. I have only problem with option number two. So I'd like to believe that it's only option two in this case, which is incorrect. And that indeed is the correct answer. Why? Because uh, the target group includes 60% women and girls, right? And then again, India has the least female labor force participation in South Asia, which stands at 20.3%, which is a quite a low number overall. Moving on to 63. Central Government of India has launched a national action plan under the National Rabies Control Program for dog-mediated rabies uh, elimination and uh, the overall elimination target has been kept at a round number which is 2030 and also declared uh, rabies as a notified disease. So basically on September 28, 2021 on World Rabies Day, the Central Government basically launched the National Action Plan for Dog-Mediated Rabies Elimination by 2030. It's also known as NAPRE. That's the whole goal here. Moving on to the next question, which of the following is the incorrect option with respect to the five years on global climate tech investment trends since the Paris Agreement. And this is basically by London and Partners and Deal Room and Co. So India is basically ranked eighth in the list of 10 countries. I think it's, in, uh, it's ranked a little lower than that. 
for climate technology investment from 2016 to 2021. Overall, global climate tech VC investment basically increased from dollar 6.6 .6 billion in 2016 to 32.3 billion dollars in 2021. So significantly higher investments have happened in this phase. Then India's uh, climate tech firms have basically received over dollar 1 billion in venture capital. Uh, in terms of funding during this five year period and the list has obviously been topped by United States with around 48 billion that it has received followed by China which has received 18.6 billion dollars. Now the report basically analyzed the trends in the climate sector since the 2016 uh, COP or the conference of parties in terms of United Nations that held in Paris, France. So if I look at that, I think the only option that seems incorrect would be, looks to be option number A and I think India is ranked lower than that. Yes, indeed, India is ranked ninth overall. Uh, in the list, the ranking basically in terms of uh, top 10 countries for climate technology investments will be US, China and Sweden at number 3. All right, moving on to the next question. What is it? So recently, Prime Minister Narendra Modi basically approved to reconstitute this 7-member Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister following the end of its tenure in September 2021. So which of these statements pertaining to that fits in the options? So EAC PM will be reconstituted for a period of 2 years or until further orders. That's what it looks like. Uh, noted economist and Niti Aayog uh, member Bibek Debroy, who's been serving as the chairman of the EACPM since 2017, will continue to be the chairman of the reconstituted EACPM. That also appears to be correct. So it was established by replacing the PM EAC, which was headed by former uh, Reserve Bank of India Governor C. Rangarajan during the term of uh, former Prime Minister Manmohan Singh. So all of these appear to be correct options. Let's try and see. All of these three are correct. There's nothing wrong in this overall, right? Moving on to the next question. Under whose invitation has Prime Minister Narendra Modi co-chaired the virtual 18th Indian Asian Summit of 2021? So that was under the invitation of Sultan of Brunei Hassan al Bolkiya. Right, so that's the context. On 28th of October 2021, Prime Minister Narendra Modi co-chaired the virtual 18th India ASEAN, which is the Association of Southeast Asian Nations Summit 2021, at the invitation of Sultan of Brunei Hassan al Bokia, who is the current chair of uh, ASEAN as well. So leaders of ASEAN member states have participated in the summit. All of them are there, and uh, as the year 2022 marks the 30th anniversary of the India ASEAN partnership, the ASEAN leaders basically announced 2022 as the India ASEAN Friendship Year. Right, so. Moving on to now question number 67. Uh, so which of the following is incorrect with respect to the State Energy Efficiency Index 2020, which was released by the Union Minister of Power, Rajkumar Singh. So the State Energy Efficiency Index 2020 was developed by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, sounds to be correct, and the Alliance for an Energy Efficient Economy seems correct. State of Karnataka has topped the index, again seems to be okay. Then e SEEI uh, 2020, 27 states and union territories improved their score from 2019. Right, SEI 2020 assesses states and union treaties performance in energy efficiency from April 2019 till March 2020 using 68 indicators, not across five, but across six sectors. So this appears to be the incorrect option. Under SEI 2020, each state or union territory has been classified as a front runner or an achiever or a contender or an aspirant based on their scores. So all of these appear to be correct. The only problem I have with this option D. Uh, because it's not across five sectors, it's across six sectors, such as buildings, industry, municipalities, transport, agriculture and distribution companies, and uh, discoms basically, and your cross-sector initiatives as well. So these are six sectors that it's primarily taken into account. So that's question number 67. Moving on to question 68. Who launched the Sambhav, an e-national awareness program 2021 to promote the role of entrepreneurship towards the development of India? So that was basically launched by the Minister of MSMEs, which is your Narayan Tatu Rane. Right. And Sambhav is basically a one month long initiative under the Ministry of MSME. Moving on to 69, who was basically launched the first ever FIFA football for school, FIFA for S program at the Kalinga Institute of Social Sciences Bhuvaneshwar. So it's a no brainer. It has to be uh, Naveen Patnaik, the Chief Minister of Odisha only because from a locational standpoint, that makes the most sense. The motto of FIFA for the game, for the world, the current FIFA president is Gianni Infantino and is headquartered in Zurich, Switzerland. So moving on to question number 70 now. International Internet Day is basically observed on which day each year? That is October 29th as part of the uh, International Internet Day 2021. Railtel, which is a telecom infrastructure provider, has created something called as PM Vani, which is your Prime Minister's Wi-Fi access network interface, uh, which is an app to basically assist people to connect seamlessly with the available public Wi-Fi networks that are there. So PM Vani app is under testing with the CDOT, which is the Center for Development of Telematics. So that is basically this. October 29th is the International Internet Day. 
Moving on to the next question. Puneet Rajkumar, who passed away at the age of 46, is a popular actor. So that is the answer to this one. He's also popularly known as the power star. He passed away at the age of 46, despite being a very healthy individual. So it's very surprising and shocking. And uh, obviously not something which is expected at that age. And of course, may his soul rest in peace. Moving on to question number 72. Recently, which major tech company has changed its corporate name to Meta? Meta Platforms Inc. Obviously, you know the answer that is Facebook. And uh, in this case, as part of the major rebrand, Facebook basically has changed its corporate name to Meta Platforms. Uh, basically, Meta is the uh, tag name overall to include its virtual reality vision for the future as well. So the Facebook uh, CEO Mark Zuckerberg basically unveiled his plans to build something called as the Metaverse, an online world where people can basically game, they can work, they can communicate with each other in a virtual environment. And why was Twitter in the news recently? Because the new CEO has taken over from Jack Dorsey, who happens to be uh, of Indian origin, that is Parag Agarwal. So that is on Twitter. Moving on to question number 73. Ahmed Shah Ahmed Zai, who passed away at the age of 77, was a former prime minister of Afghanistan and he was a very well renowned leader in that context, right? Moving on to the question number 74. Uh, correct option in terms of Mukhyamantri Avasiya Budhikar Yojana. A scheme has basically launched by the state government of Haryana. I don't think it's Haryana. Whenever I talk about Mukhyamantri, it always links a bell with MP, but I'll want to check that again. So, construction of houses under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana and the eligible applications will be given ownership rights in joint names of both the husband and wife. Seems to be a very interesting scheme overall. I think the answer in this case has to be option uh, 2 and 3 are correct because I don't think it was launched by Haryana. Indeed, it was launched by Madhya Pradesh, right? So, that is basically your uh, Mukhya Mantri Avasiya Budhikar Yojana. Right? And it will provide plots of lands to families who do not have land to build their own homes and the construction of houses comes under the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana overall. That's the context on this one. Moving on to 75, who was appointed as the chairperson of the NCLAD, which is the National Company Law Appellate Tribunal for a period of four years from the date of assumption of charge of the post or till he attains the age of 70 years or until further order. So the answer in this case is Justice Ashok Bhushan. And recently, Justice R. Sudhakar was appointed as the uh, chairperson for NCLT. So that's the two that you should remember from that context. Right, so that is basically the answer on this one. And uh, Justice S.J. Mukhopadhyay was the first chairperson of NCLAT, had retired on 14th of March 2020. And it's only now that Justice Ashok Bhushan has going to be uh, taking over as the chairperson. Right, so moving on to the next question, which of the following is the correct option for India's manned ocean mission, which is Samudrayan? So this is India's first manned ocean mission, seems to be the correct one, uh, launched by Dr. Jitendra Singh, Minister of State. Uh, then... Ministry of Earth Science from the National Institute of Ocean Technology in Chennai, Tamil Nadu. That is the context here. Now, with this launch, India joins the unique set of countries in the world, which are the countries that we're talking about, USA, Russia, Japan, France, and China, who basically have an underwater vehicle to carry out their subsea missions. In 2020, China basically touched the ocean depth of 11,000 meters using its manned submersible, which is basically named as Fenduze. Uh, now, technically speaking, I think E has to be the option because all of them seem to be correct to me. Yes, indeed. So, all of these options are correct. So, Matsya 6000, the manned submersible developed under India's deep sea mission is currently developed with the support from DRDO, from ISRO and from IIT Madras as well. Uh, so, World Oceans Day is basically on 8th of June and the theme for the year 2021 is the ocean, lives and livelihoods. That's the context on question 76. Moving on to 77. Which of the following is an incorrect option of the Rashtriya Ekata Divas or National Unity Day? So it is annually celebrated or observed across India on the 31st of October to mark the birth anniversary of Vallabhai Javer Bhai Patel, endeared as Sardar in India. 31st October 2021 marks the 146th birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. Okay, in 2014, the government of India led by Prime Minister Narendra Modi declared 31st of October of every year the birth anniversary of Sardar Vallabhai Patel as the National Unity Day or the Rashtriya Ekata Divas. Now, the National Rail Museum celebrates the Ekta week by organizing an exhibition on Sardar Vallabhai Patel and the Indian Railways starting from the 31st of October to 14th November 2021. Now, Home Minister Amit Shah dedicated the Sardar Patel Leadership Center to the nation at the LBS NAA, which is your Lal Bahadur Shastri National Academy for Administration, Masuri Uttarakhand. The only option which I have a problem with is option E because I don't think it was Home Minister Amit Shah, but it was Dr. Jitendra Singh the Minister of State for Personnel, Public Grievances and Pensions who basically dedicated the Sardar Patel uh, Leadership Center to the nation at the LBSNAA. Right, so that is the context on question 77. Moving on to 78. 
the RBI basically gave a license to the 6000 crore uh, Narsiel to start operations as a bad bank. So the license was granted under section 3 of uh, Sarafesi Act which is the securitization and reconstruction of financial assets and enforcement of security interest. Which year was this passed in? It was passed in 2002. Right. So in July 2021, the Ministry of Corporate Affairs has basically incorporated uh, Narsiel, which is technically classified as the bad bank or the asset reconstruction company of India after its registration with the registrar of companies. Now, 51% of this will be held by all your public sector banks and the remaining will be held by your private sector lenders. Now, Narsiel is expected to acquire assets in the form of uh, NPAs or the bad loans of your uh, various uh, banks that are there uh, by obviously making an offer to the lead bank. Once Narsiel's offer has been accepted, that's where IDRCL steps in for the management and the value addition in this perspective, right? So that is the context here. Moving on to question number 79, which state government has launched the Swecha program to promote menstrual hygiene amongst adolescent girls studying in government schools and junior colleges? So the answer in this case is Andhra Pradesh. Uh, to basically to provide uh, quality sanitary napkins free of cost to over 10 lakh girls studying from the classes 7th to 12th. So menstrual hygiene day is basically on 28th of May and the theme for 2021 was action and investment in menstrual hygiene and health. Moving on to question 80, who basically launched the world's first instant voice app consult which is a knowledge sharing platform that was launched by uh, Nitin Gadkari. So the Union Minister Nitin Jairam Gadkari, basically the Minister of Road Transport and Highways launched the world's first instant advice app called as Consult which is a knowledge sharing platform essentially. Now moving on to question 81, what is the official mascot of the under 19 women's football world cup India 2022? So the official mascot is Ibha and it happens to be the Asiatic Lioness, that's the context here. So FIFA basically unveiled Ibha and Asiatic Lioness as the official mascot of the under 17 women's world cup uh, India 2022. So Ibha basically re represents obviously women Women power so that's where the lioness comes into the picture right so this is the seventh edition of the biennial international football tournament the 2022 fifa under 17 women's world cup is being hosted by india from october 11th to 30th of october 2022 so that's a great honor from an indian context moving on to question number 82 who has been appointed as the chairperson of the newly set up 20,000 crore national bank for financing infrastructure and development which is a development financial institution being brought up in india all right so that is the context and the answer in this case is kv kamath who will basically be the chairperson for this entity right now he's going to be the chairperson for napfid and uh, you're talking about napfid being a part of the department of financial services under the finance ministry now talking about kv kamath he's a renowned banker throughout his career he started his career at icici in 1971 and retired as the md and ceo in april 2009 and has obviously become a non-executive chairman but he's also been part of various other boards in a lot of other capacities uh, across companies as well so that is on question 82 moving on to question 83 which company has been awarded the outstanding renewable energy user at the third edition of india green energy award by the indian federation of green energy also known as ifg so the answer in this case happens to be tvs motors now technically speaking tvs motor company has been awarded this and uh, this was presented by again uh, the Union Minister for Road, Transport and Highways, that is Nitin Gadkari. Right, so that's the 83rd question for you. Moving on to 84, which bank received the top organization with innovative HR practices uh, in the 19th edition of the Asia Pacific HRM Congress? So the answer in this case happens to be uh, Karnataka Bank, which basically won this award, right, and is headquartered in Mangalore, Karnataka, and the current MD and CEO of Karnataka Bank is Mahabaleshwara MS. It was founded on 18th of February 1924 and the tagline is your family bank across India. So that's on uh, Karnataka Bank. Moving on to question 85. Who has authored the book titled The Custodian of Trust? So the answer in this case is Rajneesh Kumar, former SBI chairman. Right. And uh, uh, this was released on 18th of October 2021. So he served as the chairman of SBI for a three year term between October 2017 till October 2020. Now, currently, he's also director on board of uh, HSBC Asia Pacific, then also on the board of LNT Infotech Limited and also Lighthouse Communities Foundation. So that is where he's present there, right? So that is on uh, the custodian of trust, Rajneesh Kumar. Moving on to question number 86. Uh, in terms of illam tedi kalvi, which means illam obviously refers to house, tedi means search and kalvi means education. So education at doorstep is the meaning that gets conveyed. So the Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M.K. Stalin launched the illam tedi kalvi education at doorstep scheme at uh, Mudalayar Kuppam Vilupuram district, which promotes education at all levels, right from school to university for all sections of the society. The initiative will basically start in 12 districts and registrations are open for volunteers where the volunteer pupil ratio can be in the ratio of 1 is to 20. So one volunteer for every 20 pupils. The implementation is undertaken in two stage committees. One is the district stage and second is the block stage committee. So the options, all of them appear to be correct in this case and that indeed is our 
answer this to basically impart education to children at home where the volunteers will basically take classes for up to two hours that's the whole context here moving on to question number 87 which state has launched the Mera Ghar Mere Naam scheme which is a pro people initiative which is aiming to give ownership to the people living within the Lal Lakir uh, a part of the village habitation used for non-agricultural purposes of villages and cities. So whenever I think about Lal Lakir, the language seems uh, in sync with Punjab and that's the answer in this case. So essentially, Sri Charanjit Singh Channi, the chief minister of Punjab, launched the Mera Ghar Mere Naam scheme. Now, the Basera scheme of Punjab basically provides proprietary rights for your slum households outside the Lal Lakir area. So basically, your Mera Ghar Mere Naam is within the Lal Lakir area. Right and uh, Basera is for outside the Lal Lakir area. That's the context on question 87. Moving on to 88, uh, which of the option is correct regarding the blue flag 2021? So, total of 84 Indian Air Force personnel took part in the international multilateral combat exercise titled Blue Flag 2021 along with Indian Air Force's Mirage 2000 aircraft squadron at Israel's Ovda base. Right, and the exercise basically involves uh, Air Force missions from eight countries to share knowledge and combat experience to improve operational capabilities as well. So it was held for two weeks in Israel from October 17th to October 28th, 2021. So the theme was basically integration of fourth and fifth generation aircraft in complex operational scenarios. So that is the overall theme here. If I look at the options in this case, all of them appear to be correct. Now talking about blue flag, every two years, the Israeli Air Force basically holds the blue flag exercise to strengthen cooperation between the nations to synchronize different types of aircrafts piloted by different countries to counter armed drones and other threats that are there. The other seven countries that have participated in the 2021 exercise basically include US, UK, Germany, France, Italy, Greece and Israel. So that's the context on question 88. Moving on to 89. Recently, which state or union territory government has launched the Paryavaran Sathi chatbot, right? So whenever I'm talking anything related to pollution, uh, the first thing that has to come to my mind has to be Delhi and that's the answer in this case as well, right? So the Environment Minister of Delhi, Gopal Rai, launched the Paryavaran Sathi chatbot and website to facilitate people's participation in the fight against pollution. The chatbot has been made in partnership with UNICEF's UA. That's the context overall. So moving on to question number 89 now. Essentially, you're talking about the first ever national pension system divas, NPS divas, that was basically observed on which day? So the answer in this case is 1st of October. That's where India celebrated the first national pension system divas, right, uh, to promote pension and retirement planning for a carefree Azad retirement. Now, NPS divas is a campaign of the PFRD or the Pension Fund Regulatory Development Authority of India and was launched as part of the Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav. That's the context here. NPS divas, question number 90. Moving on to 91. Recently, the Reserve Bank of India has eased the current account rules for bank exposures for less than rupees 5 crore and allowed borrowers to open current accounts, cash credit and overdraft from the banking system under certain provisions, right? So earlier what happened was that in August 2020, RBI basically revised the directions on opening uh, and operating current accounts by banks and restricted the banks from opening current accounts for customers who already have availed OD or cash credit facility. And that is where uh, a lot of representation happened and the IBA also came back and said that uh, this is probably not the right way to go about it. And considering all those recommendations, the RBI basically said that let's keep that uh, limit of 5 crores. So anything less than 5 crores, uh, you're allowed to open. If it is greater than that, you are not. Right? That is the whole context. So there are several other restrictions if you go above 5 crores. That's the context. Moving on to question number 92. India along with which country has commenced the maiden joint tri-service exercise Konkan Shakti? of the Konkan coast in the Arabian Sea that is aimed to derive mutual benefits from each other's experiences. So the answer in this case happens to be United Kingdom. Now talking about all the other uh, tri-services that are there between India and UK. So first is obviously the exercise Konkan. It is held annually since 2004 between the Indian Navy and the Royal Navy of Britain. The next exercise is basically exercise Indradhanush that is the bilateral air exercise that is held between Indian Air Force and the Royal Air Force of UK and then exercise Ajaya warrior, which is the military exercise, which is held between India and UK military. That is the whole context, right? So moving on to question number 93. So uh, recently, the civil aviation minister, Jyoti Adhita Sindhya, basically launched the Krishi Udan 2.0 scheme, which of the following is the incorrect option pertaining to this. It has been launched uh, to implement uh, in 43 airports. I think the number is slightly larger than this is what I feel, under which uh, cargo related infrastructure will be built, mainly focusing on the Northeast, Hilly and the tribal regions and likely benefit the farmers that are there. The scheme basically converges two divergent areas in India's economic roadmap. One is agriculture and second is aviation by adopting a model of A to A, which is your agriculture to aviation. 
Then the reason for the convergence of agriculture and aviation is uh, on multi levels, which is basically efficient use of biofuels to the aircrafts. Then the use of drones in the agriculture sector, which can add tremendous value and the realization of agricultural products as well. Now, uh, an online platform called as eKushal, which is the Krishi Udan for sustainable holistic agri logistics, would be developed to facilitate information dissemination to all stakeholders regarding the transportation of all the agricultural produce. So there is an online platform also being developed called eKushal. Talking about Krishi Udan scheme, it was basically established by the Ministry of Civil Aviation in uh, February 2020 on national and international routes to basically assist your farmers in transporting agricultural products at affordable rates, right? So these are some of the things that have come under the Krishi Iran 2.0 scheme. The only problem here is uh, it's not just in 43 airports. I think it is a larger number of airports. Let's try and check that. Yeah, so there's basically looking at 53 airports at which this will be happening. So moving on to number 94, basically the Securities and Exchange Board of India has constituted a four member advisory committee headed by Vijay C. Daga on settlement orders and compounding of various offenses, right? So technically talking about Vijay C. Daga, he's a retired judge of the High Court of Bombay. The committee will work as per the SEBI regulations 2018, right? And this is on settlement orders and compounding offenses, right? So that is the context on number 94. Moving on to 95. Recently, which cyclonic storm started in the Bay of Bengal made landfall near Kalingapatnam town in uh, Srikakulam district of Andhra Pradesh? So the answer in this case happens to be Cyclone Gulab. The name was basically given by Pakistan, which means rose in Urdu or Hindi. We know that. Now, other cyclones that actually took place. So May 2021, you had Tokte, which made landfall in the Saurashtra region of Gujarat. The cyclone originated from the Arabian Sea in that case. And Tokte basically, which is a Burmese name. Uh, was named by Myanmar, uh, meaning gecko, which is a sort of a, a highly vocal lizard that is there, right? And that's in the local dialect. So, Tote was the name for that. And then in May 2021, again, you also had Yas, which made landfall in the Balasore region of Urissa. A cyclone originated from the Bay of Bengal. Yas, obviously, as pronounced as Yas, got its name from Oman. And uh, the word has its origin in the Persian language and means the flower jasmine in English, right? So that's the context as far as the cyclones are concerned. And moving on to question number 96. Uh, recently, the Supreme Court bench headed by Chief Justice of India N.V. Ramana has instituted a DASH member expert panel to investigate the issue of the usage of Pegasus spyware on the Indian citizens during 2019. So I think it was a three-member panel right and uh, to investigate the issue of the usage of the pegasus software now pegasus is basically a spyware software that was developed by uh, the israeli firm nso which can basically access stored data conversations on whatsapp and other information from a victim's mobile phone that's the context on pegasus moving on to 97 which of the following is the incorrect option or the 152nd birth anniversary of gandhi jayanti observed on 2nd of october 2021 so if you look at it on the occasion of uh, the gandhi jayanti the lieutenant governor of ladakh Radha Krishna Mathur unveiled the world's largest national flag made of khadi cotton at Leh Ladakh. Uh, so this monumental khadi national flag was prepared by Khadi and Village Industries Commission. So now talking about some of the important dates here, Satyagraha Se Swachagraha Ratyatra, that is basically from 15 September to 2nd October 2021, that's the day overall. Now uh, Swachita Hi Seva, that is between 15 September to 2nd October again. Then Swachita Samvad, which is an ongoing dialogue. So that cannot be between 15th of August till 2nd October. It has to be for a longer duration of time. It has to happen over a longer period. And then you talk about uh, Stayitva Evam Sujalam Abhiyan, 100-day campaign. So it's fairly uh, evident it's a 100-day campaign, which will start from 25th of August 2021 onward. So the answer in this case appears to be option D, which I think Samvad has to be for a longer duration of time, right? So if I look at it, Samvad is basically from 15th August 2021 to 15th August 2022. And again, this one is as it is, right? So no changes there. So D is the correct option in this case. Moving on to question number 98, which of the following is the incorrect option for the recently formed working group to roll out an overhauled Padhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana. So the working group will be headed by the CEO of uh, PMFBY, which is uh, currently Ritesh Chauhan, appears to be correct. The aim is to roll out an overhauled Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana from Kharif 2022. That also seems to be correct. The group will submit its report in three months. It's, I think, feel a little short in terms of time. I think it should be a longer duration. A key reason to form this working group is uh, the quitting of the scheme by many states due to the share of the premium. Uh, again, it could be a logical reason there as well. According to the provisional data of 19 states excluding Karnataka, there is an overall 10% fall in the enrollment of farmers under crop insurance during Kharif 2021 from the last season's 1.68 crore. So if this number is falling, then obviously a revamped PMFBY makes a lot of sense. So if you look at the overall answer in this case, I think it is everything else seems to be correct except for the uh, duration of the report, which I think should be a little longer, which is where it is 
six months that has been given overall. So that's the correct answer in this case. Now moving on to question number 99. Uh, which was the theme for United Nations World Space Week 2021 observed across the globe from 4th to 10th of October. So if I look at it overall, uh, again, given the context of a lot of developments happening globally, women in space appears to be the more logical answer here. And that indeed is the correct answer. Now talking about 4th of October, it marks the date on which the first human-made Earth satellite Sputnik 1 was launched way back in 1957. Talking about 10th of October, that marks the day on which the Treaty on Principles Governing the Activities of the States in the Exploration and Usage of Outer Space, including the Moon and other celestial bodies, that basically came into force in 1967. That's the relevance of October 4th and October 10th. Now moving on to the last question for this session. Who has won the 2021 International Hockey Federation's Men's and Women's Player of the Year Award respectively? All the awards were swept away by India this time. So it was Harman Preet Singh in the men's category and Gurjeet Kaur in the women's category. That's the answer in this case. So for the first time ever, India swept the 8th 2021 International Hockey Federation's uh, Annual Hockey Star Awards with drag flickers Harman Preet Singh and Gurjeet Kaur basically claiming the Player of the Year honors in both the men and the women category, right? So that basically brings us to the end of this session and we ended on a high talking about the achievement of uh, Indian hockey. So that ends this session on a positive note. <sighs> that was a quick rapid fire that we had today. I hope you enjoyed the session as much as I enjoyed it delivering it for you guys quickly covering so many questions in one snapshot and we were looking at the month of October, right? So that brings us to the end of this particular session and uh, wishing you all the best as far as the exams are concerned. Keep preparing hard, keep working hard and keep putting in the best possible efforts that you can and trust me, the results will be in your favor. So on that note, this is Ravi signing off. Have a great day and a wonderful week ahead.